How you doing ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to MechWarrior Online with Scout. In today's video we're going to be taking a look at a mech that I think is kind of underrated, definitely in classic battle tech and to a degree even I think even in MechWarrior Online. And that's this guy right here, the Grasshopper 70 ton inner sphere mech. Now as usual in these overview videos I'm going to show you guys three different builds of the mech. In this particular instance I'm going to use three different variants even just to give you an idea of the mech. I'll show you some gameplay in each one of those builds. And we'll talk a little bit about the history of the mech as well. So without any further ado, let's dive right in. Uh, taking a look at the native quirks of this particular model, which is the 5J, as I recall, is where I decided to start this. Yeah, there we go. The Grasshopper 5J. If you look at its native quirks, you'll see right away kind of the things that grab my attention. One, it's got the most generous armor quirks of any of the Grasshoppers. 15 in the center torso and the legs. 11 in the right and left arm, 10 in the right and left torso. So that's not too bad. But uh, kind of what grabbed me is that it's got an inner sphere ER large laser cooldown of minus 5% on top of a minus 10% energy cooldown and that heat dissipation, the uh, minus 10% to energy heat, that's as good as you're going to get across the grasshopper. So that kind of interested me because I've never, I, I kind of stay away from ER large lasers. Generally speaking, I'm not convinced that the massive extra heat that they do in this game for whatever reason is worth the range that you get. So I thought I would try an ER large laser mech and this seemed like a pretty good platform to do it on. The other thing that jumped out at me is it's got two AMSs, which isn't as rare as it used to be, but it's still not all that common. So I thought, why don't I try to take this mech and turn it into a team play mech that, you know, does well in any situation, can contribute to the team, whatever the team is doing, and also provide a little bit of protection for my teammates. So diving into the mech lab, uh, this is the build that I'm using for the Grasshopper 5J. I've got a standard 280, and I've got two ER large lasers, four medium lasers, an SRM4 mounted in the head because you've only got one slot to mount your missile system, and I really don't think an LRM5 is worth it, so I'd rather increase my short range firepower when the fight does inevitably become a brawl. And uh, I've got two tons of ammo, or correction, a ton and a half of ammo for my two AMSs, and one ton for my SRM4 because I think that's plenty. I do have case because I've packed it all into my right torso, and if something goes, I don't want this chain reaction of ugliness. But I know some of you are not fans of case, so if you wanted to ditch that, you could actually add a ton of AMS ammo for each anti-missile system. Another thing you could do, and I just haven't gotten around to it yet, is uh, you could throw a light engine in this puppy. It's got plenty of space. You could throw that heat sink that I've got there in the right torso, crit padding that ammo. You could toss one of those aside, and you can put a standard, uh, I'm sorry, a light 280 in here, and that gives you four extra tons to monkey around with. And I've made some pretty good builds with that as well, mostly just increasing my uh, heat efficiency and heat management, which you can see is 1.06, which is not great, but not terrible in a mech that's running dual ER large lasers. I've also got my ER large lasers mounted in my arm for the most flexibility. I know some people prefer high mounts, but I'm okay with them being in the arms. And this is one of the things that set this grasshopper apart is it's actually got arm mounts. A lot of the grasshoppers mount all their weapons in the torso. So, well, again, a lot of neat things going on with this particular model of the Grasshopper. And this is the build that I settled on. It works for me. And, uh, you know, when I get some C-bills in the bank, I'll probably go to a light engine. But if you don't feel like spending that money, it works perfectly fine with a standard just like this. Now, if you want to talk about skills, what I would do with this thing, I would obviously get laser duration, all four of them. And then I would get uh, as much heat gen as I could along the way to mitigate the heat of the ER large lasers. And then I think I would go straight over to the operations tree. I would look to pick up some uh, cool run and some heat containment. And uh, I think if you're going to have the two AMSs, you may as well run AMS overload to help you swap down those missiles quicker. And then since this thing's got decent armor, as you can see, and it's got some pretty generous armor quirks, I'd start throwing a bunch into the survivability tree. But uh, that's just me. You know, I think those are just entirely up to personal taste, however you guys want to do it. It's up to you. So, uh, yeah, that's the build. And uh, I think you'll find this is a pretty solid mech, even though it doesn't really excel in any particular thing. Uh, let's take this thing out on the battlefield and its nice uh, resistance paint scheme here. And uh, I'll show you guys what this thing can do. Guys, looks like we got a uh, disconnection already in our domination game that we've got going on. Um, so, history on the Grasshopper. Well, the Grasshopper is kind of an interesting mech. It was designed for the Amorous Civil War, but uh, it actually did not fight in that conflict. It didn't get completed until uh, 2780. 
and uh, it was distributed across the SLDF by 2784, just in time for the dissolution of the Star League. Uh, so after the exodus and the Star League was dissolved, all of the great houses ended up with some grasshoppers. Uh, interestingly, the production facility for the grasshopper, which was located on Bryant, it was destroyed during the Second Secession War in 2843. So all of the grasshoppers that you see from then until about 3060 are all actually original grasshoppers. Uh, there were no variants made. Check the 3025 TRO, the original one, and it will tell you that there were no variants of the grasshopper. And it looks like we're actually going to fight in the basement here. That's pretty interesting. And uh, so the, the variations that you see, let's see if we can get a piece of this uh, blackjack here. The variants that you see are actually all original grasshoppers. And uh, what you're seeing is actually refits of the original mechs. For example, the uh, 5J that we're piloting here. Don't believe what Sarna tells you, it's completely inaccurate. Uh-oh, looks like we're getting flanked. Oh, that is a Jenner, it wasn't him that flanked us. Um, somebody had machine guns. That ah, was this guy. It was a Kit Fox. We'll go over here and see if we can get a piece of them. Be still, you little rat. I don't think he's gonna make it. Maybe I can get, get out of the way. Get out of the way. Try and get us. Okay, we got the kill. Yikes. Dude, cool and flush here. And we'll go to medium lasers and SRMs only and see if we can just out DPS this uh, mad cat. He's probably hot as well. Target destroyed. There, he's down. And who else have we got Target over here? Acquired. Another mad cat. He's pretty beat up. Can we get him with the larges as we come around the corner? Target yes. Destroyed. Pick up the kill there. And it looks like the brawl in the basement, I think, is Target finally destroyed. over. So that means we need to get out of here and get, um, looks like probably back up top to help our team. I turn off the AMS, but I can't remember exactly which key that is hot key to. Fortunately, we have jumped yet, so we can get out here and uh, get to the ramp off to the right and jump over that. So anyway, as I was saying, the 5J, for example, is not a new mech. It was not a variant of the Grasshopper. It was actually a field refit. Don't believe what Sarna tells you. If you check the uh, 3050 TRO, the original one, it was a field refit done by the Free Worlds League on Nestor on behalf of the 21st Centauri Lancers and their commander, Colonel Evelina Haskell. So uh, really interesting because for a period of what? A couple of hundred years at least, all the Grasshoppers that were out and about were original mechs that were built way back just prior to the end of the Amar Civil War and the newest ones were produced uh, like I said in the Second Secession War uh, no later than 2843 before the Bryant production facility was destroyed so yeah these mechs actually lasted a really really long time and let's see if we can get a piece of uh, Oh, one of the Evan Jaguar. Maybe we can get this Marauder here, though. Is he XL? Let's XL check him. Gotta make sure we don't lose. Yep, XL. Gonna make sure we don't lose our uh, line of fire down there to him as he crossed the ramp. Maybe we can drop down here. Hello. Right in the back. Maybe we can pick up this Evan Jag as well. Who got wrecked by somebody else. And apparently that's game. It's not too shabby. I think we got four kills. I'm not sure how much damage we did. A lot of it was uh, cleaning up. So we wait for the score here. Yeah, 430 some points of damage. That ain't too bad. Pretty solid game in our Grasshopper. And like I said, it, it's really flexible. You can do just about anything with it. That's kind of a stompy game, actually. 12 to 2 but yeah as you can see compared to the rest of the team we did all right and i think this is a really solid performer it may not be a rock star in any particular area like i said but it'll do you well so there you go guys pretty solid game in the grasshopper 5j like i said it 
It's one of these mechs that the way it's set up here, it's not going to excel in any one area, but it's going to be pretty well-rounded. It's going to be able to, to fight in any situation it finds itself in, and I think it's going to serve you guys pretty well. Moving on, uh, the next mech I want to show you guys is uh, this guy right here, the Grasshopper 5N. Now, this guy's a little bit different. It doesn't have any missile or ballistic hard points. It's pure energy, eight energy hard points. And you can see its native quirks. It does have a PPC velocity bonus of 10%, energy heat dissipation bonus of minus 5%, and it does get some armor quirks, although they're not quite as generous as the 5Js, but it gets some structure bonus, interestingly, to the left and right torsos. So uh, it's a little bit different. It's not that bad. And if we take a look at this thing in the mech lab, you'll notice that it does have a hard point. Matter of fact, I'll show it to you guys here if we take it out. This is my uh, Grasshopper 5N done up in uh, Iridani Light Horse paint. But here you see it does have one extremely high energy mount in the right torso. Of course, it's got the one in the head, but that's not going to do much for you because it's only one slot. So going into the mech lab, you can see what I've done with it is I've chosen to mount an ER PPC up high in the right torso. And then medium lasers across the board, except for the head where I've got a small laser. The armor is practically maxed out, save two points in the center torso. Again, we're running a standard 280 just for maximum survivability. You could go to a light engine in this. You'll note it does have the space. It's got two empty slots on the left and right torso. But then you're going to be out of room. I'm not sure what you're going to do with the uh, four tons that you save. So, yeah, I've just stayed with a standard 280 again for money and i'll probably keep it in this particular mech rather than going to a light and you can see it's pretty heat efficient it's got a heat management of uh, 1.22 and uh, the ppc allows you to poke at really long ranges and then the four medium lasers two in each arm allow you to defend yourself in a night fight and then you've got two more medium lasers and a small in the torso and the head so even if you lose your arms you're not completely defendless and even if you lose an entire side torso depending on which side it is you still got at least three medium lasers in a small, if not three medium lasers of PPC in a small to fight with. So, uh, yeah, it's not actually a bad mech at all. It's pretty durable, and uh, I have a lot of fun with it. So uh, let's take this thing out, and I'll show you guys how it plays. Online. Sensors online. Weapons online. All systems nominal. All right, so we're looking at a domination game on Viridian Bug. But uh, before we get too much into that, I want to talk a little bit more about the uh, Grasshopper and how it is that it was able to last for so long. I mean, these things didn't go back into production until I want to say it was like 3060 with uh, the 6K, I believe is what it was called, by uh, House Corita. That was the first time it was produced again, and then that led to the 7K. So I really, I think it's down to three factors that contributed to the longevity of the Grasshopper and how one mech design uh, was able to ask, last so long with just some minor re field refits and upgrades. Um, the first is mobility. Um, if you read the 3025 TRO, the Grasshopper is one of the first jump capable heavy mechs. In fact, it goes on at length about how the release of the Grasshopper caused major revisions in lance tactics because Grasshoppers would just close with enemy lances and then at the last minute hit their jump jets land in and amongst them, maybe even behind them, up under the minimum ranges of their PPCs and LRMs and just create havoc and then jump back out again to get away as their lance mates closed in. So I really think mobility played a big role in the, in the, the longevity of the grasshopper, if you will. Uh, the other factor I think is endurance. You got to remember this is 3025 when this mech was designed and then in an era where a lot of mechs had 16 to 18 single heat sinks, you know, Warhammer, Marauder, I'm looking at you, and had some not insignificant heat problems. A Grasshopper had 22 single heat sinks. It could run and fire pretty much everything, save maybe it's LRM, and stay completely heat neutral. And even if it jumped and fired every weapon it had, it would only build two heat. So this thing could keep going where other mechs would overheat and start to shut down, and I'm really hoping I'm going to get a shot on this King Crab. Now, apparently not. And uh, last but not least is armor. Um, people tend to forget uh, that armor wasn't as prevalent in 3025 as it is now. Uh, the Grasshopper had 13 tons of, oh, better target, 
13 tons of armor, guys. Compare that to the Warhammer 6R or the Marauder 3R. Uh, 10 tons of armor on the Warhammer. 11 and a half on the Marauder. It wasn't until you got to, like, the Orion where you would find a mech that had more armor than the Grasshopper. And even then, the Orion only had one more ton, and that looked like an Atlas. So for its time, the Grasshopper was incredibly well armored. And so when you've got a machine that's mobile, it has the heat sinks to keep firing. Who's behind me? New target acquired. Looks like he's probably moved on. And uh, combined with excellent armor protection, this is a mech that can last. A really valuable mech. There's probably the little bastard that shot me. And that's borne out in the fluff. If you read, oh, here's somebody else trying to get behind me. Centurion. Uh, it's borne out in the fluff. This is obnoxious. This little crack is blocking my arms. I need to get out from behind here. Oh, hello. Somebody else. Get him. There we go. PBC hit. That should have ripped his back armor up. I'm not sure how that didn't tan him. But, um, yeah, if you read the fluff, grasshoppers were actually assigned priorities in repairs even higher than command mechs because they were that valuable. Which is, again, probably another factor that contributes to their longevity of service. So, uh, yeah, that's what I mean when I say the Grasshopper is really kind of a very interesting mech. And it really gets overlooked and doesn't get a lot of credit because it's overshadowed by these... Oh, speaking of overshadowed, there's a whole bunch of badness. We're going to back up and see if we can get some shots here. But uh, it tends to be overshadowed by these... Oh, I was trying to get into his back by these legendary mechs, you know, the Warhammer, the Archer, the Marauder, things like that. And I think the Grasshopper just kind of gets overlooked. And you could make an argument that it's as good and maybe in some ways better, and that's even worse. I'm not going to be able to get behind this Atlas. Uh, I guess it's now going to be me and a dire wolf. I hope that took his side torso off. Yeah, he's shut down. I just got to not heat and shut myself down here. Oh, shoot me in the arm. Come on, shoot me in the arm. He's not going to do it. Ow. Oh, he killed himself. <laughs> Again, endurance, right? The direwolf, undoubtedly a more powerful mech, but it doesn't have the heat dissipation. And as you saw, that guy shut himself down and then eventually destroyed himself because they're overheated. Kind of a perfect example of what we're talking about. In the back? No. I really thought I was going to get the kill on the Atlas. That sucks. I feel like we've done good damage. We haven't gotten many kills this game. That was a nice Target shot there. Acquired. What's this guy doing? <laughs> well, I guess we do get a kill. Go. You know what? Whoa, 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 whoa. Let's not just give this blackjack a kill. Let's see if we can get him coming around the other side. There we go. No! Oh! I was trying to open up for the PPC kill, but, uh, Somebody fired right as I fired the PPC and I didn't get it. Uh, Shadow Cat. I thought that was at a Gen or 2C we were chasing for a little while. Gotta be careful. I wonder why... He's got streaks and tag, but he's not firing. I wonder if maybe he's out of ammo? I don't want to uh, just give him the kill, though. Our center torso is cherry red. Really appreciate you cutting me off there, bud. So I kind of want to stay back a little bit from him. You know what? I'm going in. It, yeah, I don't think he's fired yet. He may very well be out of ammo. He's only got one, the one laser, I think. Let's see if we can get arms, arms, arms. Ah. My left arm was blocked by our friendly grasshopper there. I think I picked up a little team damage at the end of that. Trying to get the kill on that shadow cat, but... This seems like a pretty solid game. Yeah, there we go. 669 points of damage, one kill, six assists, two kills most damage dealt. We did pick up some team damage at the end, but it's only 15 points. That's not god-awful. I right, know, we will take it. It's actually a fairly decent game, fairly close, not a complete stop. So there you go, guys. Hope you enjoyed that in the Grasshopper 5N, and uh, let's get back to the mech lab and take a look at one more mech. So there you go, guys. Pretty solid game in the Grasshopper 5N. And uh, I like this mech. It's um, It doesn't have quite the distance firepower of the 5J or the one I'm going to show you guys. But it is a little bit stronger when the fight closes in. So if you're looking for something that's uh, 
Got a little more punch up close. Maybe this will be the grasshopper for you. One more mech I want to show you guys. And that is going to be the grasshopper 5P. Now this is probably, I don't want to say it's the best grasshopper by far but uh it's the one i'm currently having the most fun with now as you can see it doesn't have a lot in terms of quirk it's only got an energy range bonus of five percent and then some modest uh structure bonuses in the center torso and the left and right leg but what it does have in fact we're just going to go back to the home screen here is it's got very high mounts in the left and the right torso. What that allowed me to do with it, if we take a look at it here in the mech lab, is you guessed it, I went to dual PPCs, and then I've actually got two medium pulse lasers and two medium lasers just because I started to uh, run out of space, even though I had some tons. And this is in the back where you might want to look at, like I've got endo steel here. Maybe you remove the endo steel, put in a light 280, and that should open up some options for you. But this is how I'm currently running it, and it works for me. And again, it just saves me the C bills of having to pay for a light 280. Even with two PPCs, two medium pulses, and two mediums, I've still got a 1.15 heat efficiency. I can shield with these arms, which are fully armored, so that's real nice. And I can poke super effectively with the PPCs. And uh, again, jump jets across all the grasshoppers just give you that extra bit of mobility and flexibility. And this is a mech that uh, I'm really enjoying, even though it doesn't look like a whole lot. And here you can see it again, if you didn't see it the first time, painted up in its uh, Ginyosha paint scheme. So let's take this thing out, and uh, I'll show you guys what you can do with those two high-mounted PPCs. No matter the cost. Sensors online. Weapons online. All systems nominal. Now, all right, looks like we've got <laughs> Canyon <laughs> Network skirmish. This is going to be interesting because there are some nice ridges here where I can get up. Excuse me, get these two PPCs up over it and do some really nice shooting. Let's see, bingo! I <laughs> probably didn't do much damage. It's like a thousand meters, but. He probably wasn't expecting that kind of a response. Somebody else would do PPCs. Uh, couldn't get lucky twice, but... Uh, there's lots of PPCs in this game. It's kind of interesting. I want to go up here to the ramp, and I'm going to try to peek up over and put fire down on the guys that are probably going to be in Charlie 5, Delta 5. And this guy's Artillery pretty old. The score's up here already. Let's see if we can kind of use this rock for cover and get some fire on the Scorch. Oops, nope, he's got friends. Take that. And he missed. Got him again. I feel like those were within max effective as well, so that's probably a good 40 points of damage there. Ping him again. I'm going to be kind of annoyed if that bush blocks damage. Did you guys see that bush fall over? I wish the rest of the team would go up here, so I'm going to try to motivate them politely. I said please. Um, New target can poke acquired. That timber wolf? Nope, we can poke his friend. That looks like another grasshopper there. Ow! I was trying to twist the damage, and he didn't fire until I stopped twisting. I wonder if he did that deliberately. Uh-oh. Highlander 2C, maybe? Good to tell. Ah. New target Rock acquired. my shot. Oh. Take that. That was a nice shot. I like to keep putting fire on this Highlander. And there's another one. It looks like a Marauder 2C. Yeah, Marauder profile, but it's an assault. Look at this little bastard here. Oh, he backed up. But I think that caused those missiles to miss. Um, can we get this? Is this the Scorch? And that looks like a Ryokin. Oh, I missed him. Take that, Shadowhawk. That's not a good trade for you, but I missed him with that second volley. Who's this shooting LRMs? Get down. Get down. And you see our heat? Oh, come on. 
stupid little rock blocked it. Um, I was going to say, you see our heat efficiency is pretty good. We can sit here and sling two PPCs for quite some time before we start to get hot. Target acquired. I think I actually missed the 2C and hit that guy behind him. Oh, take that. Pick your head up again. There we go. That's that Shadowhawk still over there, I think. Yep. Medium. It's definitely that Shadowhawk still. Man, he's just getting pounded. I don't know why he keeps trying to poke. Don't really want to go in there and play with that light. Remember, all of the weapons on this particular mech are torso mounted, so... Look at this guy. He's determined to try to make something happen. We've opened up his right torso now. Center and left torso are banged up as well. I wish my team would be a little bit more aggressive right now, and I just missed that locust. That would have been a great shot. Oh, here's this guy, though. That was probably an arm shot. He just shot me in the back. I think it's friendly. And we're up by two, but the team doesn't want to move, so I guess maybe I will move up to the next ridge. Might be able to, maybe that thing there, right in there, hide there and uh, shoot down. But New target acquired. The thing is, as we move up, there's going to be people on the left and right of us, and I don't want that. I'd like them all the on one side, eliminated. so we'll see if we can get over here and uh, finish off the Shadowhawk that we pummeled. And then that'll give us a situation where all the enemies are to our left, and that light finished them off. There we go. Take that, sir. And that. And that. Acquired. Yeah. They were looking. They are probably trying to get this light down here. And I just shoved my face right in front of their reticle. There's a Highlander. Pulse lasers don't have the range to touch him. Our right torso is open now. We're going to have to be a little more careful. Again, the rest of the team is lagging way too far behind. The assaults are just fiddle faddling around back there at D4 doing nothing. Not this Atlas. He's going in. Good Atlas. Oh, how did that miss? Somebody's behind him, it looks like. Down in the low ground. Oh, let's see if I can get this guy off him. Uh, Target acquired. Took something off of that Locust, but unfortunately, I think he's probably going to get our Atlas because our Atlas is over committing. Um, let's stay on the inside here to our left so we're not exposed. Yeah, we just lost the Atlas. Overcommitted. There we go. Took the uh, right torso off from this guy. Damn it. That's what I was afraid of. Somebody behind me. Let's try to stick with these guys. Uh oh. Oops. Pull it flush. Need to get out, get out, get out, get out, get out, get out, get out. Ah, uh, I totally missed that shot. Ow, 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 ow. Take that stalker. Oh, how did that not kill him? We really need people to be more aggressive here. Our assaults really need to get up here and get in the fight. Uh, can we get this locust? No, he's down low. Uh, somebody over there, I think. Uh, he went back down. I was going to try to get him as he crossed left or right, maybe? Oh! Just missed. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Boom! Uh, he just lost his leg when he fell. What do you guys think? Jump 360, maybe? We've almost got them all. Clean up the survivors. We're picking up lots of KMDDs from the punishment we did earlier, and can we time it right? Target destroyed. <laughs> oh, I didn't get it. Shit. Oh, I thought that was going to be cool. We didn't get the kill, though. We've gotten Target several acquired. kills most damage dealt, though. Target destroyed. The ground forces. We're detecting no everyone. more hostiles. Good Thanks job, everybody. Soldiers. Thanks for that win. That was a pretty good game, I think. You're welcome, man. Let's, uh, let's check the damage, but I saw we got several. Yeah, there you go. We got one killing blow, but we got seven assists, one solo kill, and five kills most damage dealt, 691 points of damage. So that is a pretty good game in the 5P. I, uh, I really like this setup, but 
Uh, I'm going to continue to tinker with it a little more. I think maybe we can make it a little better, but as it stands, if you just want to do a simple mod to your 5P, this is a great mech and a lot of fun. So there you go, guys. That's uh, my build for the Grasshopper 5P, and as you can see, it works pretty dang well. Now, if you're wondering why I haven't showed you the uh, bog standard 3025 Grasshopper 5H, uh, it's because you can actually do this build arguably a little better on the 5H. If I show you guys what I'm talking about right quick here before we uh, close out the video, here's my 5H. And as you can see, I've pretty much done the exact same thing, except it's got more hard points, so that allows me to have some arm-mounted medium lasers to defend myself with a little bit more uh, accuracy up close. And as you see, it's a pretty efficient build. It is using every bit of tonnage and almost every slot save too. The only reason I didn't show this to you guys is because I'm kind of playing with it right now. Uh, it's between this with the light 280 and the high mounted PPCs or larges or maybe ER larges and then using the four tons I save from dropping the PPCs to ER larges or larges to throw back in an SRM4 and some ammo. I just got to decide where I want the ammo. I'm not a real big fan of ammo in my center torso but then I don't like it flopping out in the side. So I'm kind of playing with that, uh, which one of the two builds I like best, and I'll come back to the 5H and probably just do it its own video. So, uh, yeah, there you go, guys. There's the Grasshopper. All in all, I have to say it's a pretty solid mech. It doesn't really have the rock star reputation, obviously, of the, say, like the Warhammer or the Archer, and I think that's why it gets overlooked so much. But it really is a great mech. Uh, I think it's good really solid both for classic battle tech and especially for those of us that are playing still mech warrior online so if you haven't already pick one up and give it a shot and uh, i think you'll be happy with it so that's it for today guys hope you enjoyed the video as always if you have any questions or comments please leave them in the section down below drop us a like if you feel like it and uh, hope you enjoyed we'll see you on the next one